Hey everybody, how's it going? We are back with another Sphinx challenge run. This run is bigger than we have ever done before, so that's why it's a little, uh, released a little later than usual. It's taken me probably about four days to root it and uh, just practice it and make sure everything's ready to go. We're going to try and get maximum health in the shortest time possible. So it's, it's quite the challenge. Let's get into it. As usual, I will meet you in Heliopolis, where the run pretty much begins. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are now in Heliopolis, and the first thing we want to do, as with the uh, monster list run, is we want to come over here and grab the chest of 100 scarabs that's up here. We also, while we're here, grab a few extra scarabs from the pots, and an eye of a tun, which will come in handy later. So as before, just swim glitch through this wall, avoid the water surface, and just swim straight upwards until we get to, let's say, around here. Swim over this way, jump, and oh, we missed it. Missed the sword dive. That is fine. Let's try that again. Made it. There we go. Yeah, if you're not, if you don't attack soon enough, uh, it'll just send you into a dive into the water below. Right, there we go. We are up to 114 scarabs or something like that. Grab an extra 20 from in here. And an eye of a tin. So this run is very heavy on the health management, scarab management, and even managing our capture beetles sometimes. It's all very important. So once we've got that, we're going to head into Bedouin Outpost, as usual, to get our capture beetles. Do something slightly different here in that we grab an, a turn eye from in that pot there. Now we need the turn eyes for later for when we do the beach race because you get a gold ank piece from the beach race. Now in total, max health consists of 12 health uh, points. Well, 12, 12 health bars, the, uh, the anks that you see normally at the top center. Currently we have four. You start with three, you get one from the uh, the worshipper fight. You get one each from the apocalypse fight, the geb queen fight, and the pharaoh spider fight. And the rest of the five, I think. Yeah, it must be five. You get from combining gold ank pieces. So you need four gold ank pieces to turn into one extra health, and each one requires two, a cost of 200 scarabs. Which is why managing our money count essentially is so important. So we've got our capture beetles, and we are now going to run over to first mummy level. However, before we do that, uh, we are going to catch a knives cat which I haven't equipped my capture beetles for come on come on there we go lovely grab a knives cat and this is just because it's convenient it's en route and we're going to use that later to get the zipline handle now we need the zipline handle to do the obstacle course in Heliopolis outside the cursed palace it is also very important for us to manage our onyx scarab count because we require onyx scarabs to get two of the gold ank pieces and each one costs 150 onyx scarabs there are only something like 400 just over 400 on onyx scarabs in total so it's it's very important to get just the right amount we also need 10 more to buy the cave door key in order to do the beach race and another 10 to actually get into the shop in the first place. So in total we require 320 onyx scarabs. Which means in this first mummy level we are going to be collecting all of them. All 90 in this first level. Now I can't confirm that I've rooted the onyx scarab collection completely optimally. But I think I've done a, a fairly good job so we'll have to see. Right, we're into the first mummy level. 
fairly standard as you've seen plenty of times before. Overall, we are going to have to do all six of the mummy levels. And that's because you get five of the gold ank pieces from doing the mummy levels. The other rewards you get, because there are six mummy levels, is the parasol once you've done four of the mummy levels. And we actually need the parasol as well. Although, do we... I'm not sure we need it. But as each of the uh, health upgrades costs 200 scarabs, it's easier to get the large scarab bag and then just get a load of scarabs at once rather than filling it up to, say, 400 each time, which I think is the max of the normal carry bag. Anyway, you'll see that later. Although you may notice the large scarab bag only goes up to 900 scarabs, a max of 900. And we have to buy five pieces of health, which costs a thousand scarabs. So we are going to have to do one of the, buy one of the health pieces slightly earlier. Right, the first five of our Onyx Scarabs are here, which I'm not sure we actually need because I'm usually left with five Onyx Scarabs left over. Uh, but it's nice to get them just in case, just in case we accidentally miss a Scarab somewhere because they do like to wander off. And sometimes they fall into water when you're on fire, which is not its not ideal. Or they just jump off a cliff or fall into lava or somewhere you can't reach them. And unfortunately, they don't respawn. Which makes going for the collect all Onyx Scarabs achievement incredibly difficult. It means it's always a good idea to save before you do a mummy level as well. Just in case you miss one and you're trying to get that achievement. Right, that is the Lunar Planetarium key. So let's head over to the other side where there are a couple of... Um, Burnable boxes, which have scarabs in. And then the rest are in the main area, which we will get later. I do have the roots on my other monitor, just so I can... I There was no way I was going to remember the whole route. So I've got everything planned out on my other monitor. The only trouble is trying to keep track of where I actually am on the route. I'm going to estimate this run is actually going to take us around two and a half hours, maybe even three. So it's a really long run compared to what we've done before. However, it is very good practice for doing a 100% run at some point. Here we go. So first uh, box of Onyx Scarabs, we'll burn that, burn this fence, then come back and grab these. I don't know if, uh, if that matters, if we just stand there and collect them first and then burn the, the fence. I like to feel it's faster though. There's also another box down here, which we are just going to stand around and wait for them to appear. There we go. And now this section is just as normal. I am thinking I will do a any percent route, just kind of beginner's guide, uh, like a full video run through of it. But I won't do any of the optimizations or anything. Just uh, just go over the main routes and the main tricks that you need to do. Ah, that's interesting. We're going to make this in time. We should do. Oh, <laughs> that was tight. That was very tight. Because we stood around and collected the the scarabs, it made the bridge slightly off sync, which I wasn't expecting. But yes, I was thinking I'd do a 100% kind of beginner's guide, uh, sorry, any percent beginner's guide, where I just run through the, the normal route without any of the optimizations, just the main sort of skips uh, that are required to actually finish the run. Because if you include all of the different optimizations, it makes it very complicated. And if, a, if somebody new is trying to learn it, I think it's just too much information. So as long as you can finish a run with all the, the main skips, you can always add in the optimizations later. Okay, here we go. This is where we collect the majority or the, uh, the rest of the scarabs for this section. 
There are some in this box here, and then there are four boxes in the main area. So all I like to do is burn two at a time. Come back and grab these. And then we're going to have plenty of time left over to actually use the Fire Mummy's ability. In here. Ooh, that was a <laughs> bit of a butt-clenching jump. I thought we were going to hit the water there. Okay, so what's next after Mummy 1? Well, we're going to portal to Abidos. And we're going to give in that Knives Cat that we got earlier to get the zipline handle. And that will allow us to do the obstacle course. We're also going to buy the rats while we're there because you get a gold ank piece for doing all the monster lists. Which is why we need to capture all the monsters that we captured in the, the monster list video. Oh, uh, one more thing while we're in Abidos. So zipline handle, rat, and we're also going to do the whole, uh, well, we're going to talk to the beggar, get the gold ank piece off him. Uh, and then we're going to go and do Apocalypse as well, and get the 100 Scarabs while we're there. So quite a lot to do. Got the 90 Scarabs, excellent. It's all the Scarabs from that section. So we're going to portal to Abidos. And first thing we're going to do, go to the museum and get the zipline handle. Then we're going to go and buy the rat and then talk to the beggar. And then we're going to go and do pass card skip. So we will see how that goes. I will add in occasional saves throughout the run, uh, just in case. Because, you know, we're not going for an optimal time here, as usual. We're just seeing roughly how fast it can be done. Okay, give you the nice cat. Zipline handle, lovely. And the next time we'll be back here is after doing all six of the mummy levels, when we finally give in all of the jewels. We're going to hoard them until then. Ooh, wrong way. Usually with Sphinx, when you go through a door, it tends to... Well, a door or an entrance, it tends to spawn you facing away from the door. Or the camera is facing away from the door, at least. Like that. Whereas with the prince, it's the other way around. It always seems to be the camera is facing the door and you've got to run backwards, essentially. Which is why it always gets me when it does the opposite for Sphinx. I'm just rambling here. But there you go. Now, we only have 25 scarabs. And we need to give the beggar 30. So we're going to grab... 10 from here and then go and grab the gold ank piece off him make sure you hit the right options lovely and now it's time for pass card skip you know I was speaking to I had a discord chat with love dove the other week and they told me this bridge is actually based off a bridge in Venice. And in fact, most of Abidos is based off Venice, which uh, you wouldn't really expect. Considering it's not Egyptian. But it works incredibly well. So if you, if you look up a picture of this bridge in Venice, it looks pretty much identical, including, uh, depending on where you're standing, on one of the docks. It even has one of the, the docks included. It's just a... almost identical picture. Having a bit of trouble with pass guard skip here. I think I'm uh, hovering too fast. Yeah, there we go. Slow it down slightly and... and we've made it over. So I've got to do a slight detour here, just go and grab these scarabs over here. As I said, scarab management is very important in this run. So we should be up to about 42 here, yeah. And now we're going to go to the council chambers 
This also gives us an opportunity to get the wasp spider as well without having to get it from Great, Great Wall 1 as we did last time. So as I said, we do need to be careful of our capture beetle count. Ooh, that was cheeky. Bit of a backhand slash. Okay, now we can go and jump in here. Hopefully not get hit too much by these. If we do, there's not, not a whole lot we can do about it. So while I was rooting, originally, for some reason, I'd done a miscalculation and thought we only needed 800 scarabs to get all the, buy all the health pieces. When, in fact, we needed a thousand. So, I thought we were fine on scarabs, and then I realised and had to essentially pull 200 scarabs from nowhere during the route. And that is why we get this, uh, this chest of 100 scarabs in here. The rest of the 100 scarabs we kind of just pick up from pots all over the place. Now I'm thinking it's probably worth seeing if we get any, yeah, any health here, just in case. I only need a little bit, really. Oh, well, that... You know what? <laughs> Get me out of here. Blimey, those rats are fast. They're actually very tricky to hit in the water. You've got to get the angle just right. Right, so we're going to talk to the mayor here. Get the physician's note for later. So that will allow us to do the third mummy section, but... First, we are going to do Apocalypse. So, usual route, we're going to head back outside here and do the swim glitch to get into the fight. Don't hit me. Don't. There. Good boy. Perfect. Now we just swim in this direction until we see the council chambers. Thankfully, there is a bit of water just outside here. There we go. We can dive into and then just make our way to the loading zone. I think if that water wasn't there we'd probably need crocodile scales. Which, incidentally, we don't actually get during this run. Oh, I thought I'd missed that then. <laughs> Right, Apocalypse. I haven't done this for a little while, so we'll see how it goes. It's usually a very simple fight. You just don't want to mess it up too much. As soon as you kind of go out of order, it becomes a right mess. And actually, actually a kind of difficult fight. We've also got to hope we don't end up with any glitches here either. Right, lovely. One hit down. No need to rush it. That's usually my downfall, is when I try and rush the win sections and uh, get closer to the next gem. Whereas if you just do this, it's uh, essentially perfectly timed. One more. Perfect. That's That was a perfect fight. Right, we're going to go and boat to Abidos. Which you might think is a little strange, boating there instead of portaling there. But it's because we need to go and see the physician. So I believe this... might be slightly faster. Although now I'm thinking about it, this uh, swimming bit is a little slow. And it does cost us 25 scarabs, so maybe it is better to portal there instead. As I said, the, the routing is not perfect by any means. So I don't think we need to pick up any scarabs here. No, right. Now we just uh, come over here, talk to you. And do Mummy 3. Right, so this is the one with the... 
the bats. There we go. Unfortunately, so this uh, Mummy 3 is a very long section. And unfortunately, we have currently found no way to speed it up. In addition to getting all the scarabs as well, it's it's fairly slow. Although I suppose the the one good thing about it is the the scarabs are actually kind of en route for most of the the level, so it doesn't take too much time to grab them. Too much extra time, I should say. Right, let's see if I can remember the best way of doing this. Oh, we're not even into the main section yet. Yep, we've got this outside bit to do first. As I said, not really much you can do to speed this up. Apart from maybe <laughs> maybe not doing that, I think that, uh, that does slow us down a little bit. So let me know if you would like to see something like a 100% run, or I've also had some other ideas for an all abilities run, so get all main ability items. Is it? Yes, going this way. Um, also, I thought maybe all monsters complete the museum could be a, a fairly good one. But as usual, if you do have any other suggestions, I would be more than happy to hear them. This is where I'm really going to have to concentrate on what order to do things. So we do need to burn those boxes, but we'll do those later because we need to climb up here once more in a bit. Was I meant to set myself on fire? No, no. That's fine. Yeah, because when you drop down here, you get extinguished anyway. Right, so we're going to pull this this way. That's right. We're going to pull the left lever twice to line those up. Then I'm going to go and get some fire. Anywhere you need to burn some boxes to get scarabs right by water is always slightly worrying. You've got to make sure the scarabs don't go in the water or you've got to go and set yourself on fire again. It can be useful to know that the scarabs tend to run away from you when they're released. So if you stand on the water side, they tend to run away from the water, which is always very handy. Did I? I didn't jump in the water there, did I? Whoo! Thank you. Okay, we've got a lot to do with our fire here. Hopefully we can do it all in one go. It is a fairly long timer, so we should have time. Oh, don't you dare. Don't you dare run in the water. Okay, I'm going to wait here for that to drop. Sometimes you keep moving during the cutscene and it can uh, it can make you fall into the water. There are quite a few things you've got to be careful of. Right, lovely. And then we pull center one twice and the right one twice. Okay, perfect. That opens up that. We then pull the center one once and the right one once. Electrify ourselves and... That'll be it for this uh, this half, pretty much. I have really enjoyed learning how to do these other sections that you don't usually do during the any percent route. As I said, I was really I've really been looking for some variation in the game, and having not, I again as I was speaking to Love Dove last week, I realised I haven't played through the game properly in such a long time. So it is nice to do these other sections, at least semi-properly. One other thought was, I'm thinking of doing a run, just a, a normal, okay, semi-normal playthrough of the game on my Twitch channel at some point. The reason it's semi-normal was because I wanted to try it with only a maximum of one health, which means I can get hit kind of like a max three times uh, before dying. It can make the game a lot more challenging, but uh, I think it'd be fun to do. And it would be a, a normal playthrough of the game as well. I'd try and 
stop myself doing any skips or any uh, glitches. Let's see how it goes. Right, we are already an hour into the run. Maybe this is going to take longer than I expected. Right, so I want to drop here, pull this one. Unfortunately, there really isn't any way to streamline this mummy section. It's a lot of going back and forth. So we're going to pull this lever and then go through those doors. And there are two more brazier things we've got to light. I mean, this must be the intended way of doing it. Because it is kind of the, the fastest way to do it. They just, for some reason, there aren't any glitches to speed it up. Ah, we've got plenty of time left on our fire. Hop in this one. Hop in this one. This opens up the laser section. Ah, no. Step on the button. Okay. A lot of these things I'm saying, I'm more doing to <laughs> more doing just to remind myself of what to do. Okay, that opens up the blue one. Slow is fast with this one, definitely. I mean, sure, you could probably try jumping over the lasers, going backwards or something, uh, but I'm not sure it's worth it. Unless you can do it very consistently, which, to be honest, the lasers aren't particularly consistent. There is a very high chance you're going to get accidentally hit by one. Just need to grab this. There we go. Lovely. I don't know about you guys. I always used to struggle grabbing onto these handles. I think I always used to either misjudge the distance or the speed of them. Okay. Uh, we want to go down here. We want to open this. I'm not going to use the fire straight away. I think that's what I did during my practice and it was, uh, it was a bit slow. So we're going to grab the electricity first. I think the rule of thumb is to kind of... Grab the onyx scarabs wherever is con most convenient, rather than aiming for them first. Right, so we drag this roughly this direction. This should get us to somewhere we can jump on it. Yep, that looks fine. Go and get some fire. We're going to need to get some fire twice because we need to head back in the water to move that platform. So we'll burn this box while we're here. <laughs> we'll ignore that, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> we'll ignore that. What did I say about um, Onyx Scarab's second? See, that jump is fine. Okay, and then we'll kind of drag this this way. This should line up... What, like here? Yeah, that's fine. Now we just need to pray we've got enough time to... Oh, I thought I'd missed that again. That's fine. Uh, we're going to wait on this one. Okay. Enough time to burn this box, get all the way around, burn the entrance to the glyph key, and get the final box of scarabs. So there are a total of 800 onyx scarabs in this section. Ah, missed it. Well, that's good to know for next time. Well, I suppose we've uh, we've kind of messed up all the time of the tr of the uh, the hang hangers, the hang trains anyway. I think we should, yeah, we should have plenty of time. Nothing to worry about. This is a very long mummy section, isn't it? I'm just glad it can go this quickly. And we've still got to get around to the other side to pick up the final glyph key as well. Right, burn our way through here. Grab the glyph key and get the final onyx scarabs. Brings our total up to... 190 over the two, over the course of the two mummy levels we've done so far. I suppose that's another downside of this level is uh, if you do mess it up even slightly, it can put you really out of sync with the trains. 
Here we go. Now we just wait until we're at that main platform, grab the glyph key, and we're out of here. So after Mummy 3, uh, we're going to boat to Heliopolis again, outside the Cursed Palace. And then we're going to head into Great Wall 1. Where we'll get Fire Armadillos, uh, we'll get Almost a Bull. Uh, the Blowpipe, we'll get the Big Bull. We're going to speak to Anubis uh, to get the stone to release the farmers. And then we'll do all the obstacle course and uh, grab a few more uh, gold ank pieces here and there. Because we need so much money and there are also two gold ank pieces hidden in the farm, it's important to release the farmers pretty much as soon as possible because it takes five minutes for them to dig up a plot that you've chosen. And it also takes a lot of time for them to both walk to the plot and walk back from the plot. So that was one of the particularly difficult things was rooting when to go and visit the farmers. So we should be on about a hundred scarabs. 103, that is perfect. There are actually about 70 scarabs in the Pharaoh's uh, section in the Cursed Palace, which we do go into later. And that is essentially our backup supply of scarabs. We'll top up to the amount we need. Right, please. Yes, lots of capped beetles. That's just what we wanted. Grab you. Uh, we'll wait for another one as well. Perfect. Grab some scarabs here. That's a very nice pot there. Right by the entrance. Gives us 20 scarabs, so we can grab that on the way out as well. This is where we get to an almost a ball. If you will uh, allow me to capture you, please. Now, the bit I'm worried about here is actually getting to Anubis quickly. So I always tend to st struggle with it a little bit. Right, I just need to remember not to press that button with the fire armadillo. We don't want to release it. Perfect. That is three fire armadillos to give to Anubis. I know we need five fire armadillos in total. Although that may be six. <laughs> Maybe we'll get six just to be on the safe side. So we're not going to be flicking the switches this time. Done a bit of practice, I should be able to get this. Let's see how this goes. And we'll also grab the big bull once we've made it across. All right, here we go. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, try again. Let me up! No! <laughs> uh, you know, while we're here... Capture one more. So the trick is to be able to have a single and double jump available after you get hurt from those spikes. And I think what I usually do is get too close to the spikes. I think I've got to angle myself slightly further out. Oh, made it! Oh, <laughs> there we go. Okay. Capture the big bull. I do like using that, where you place a capture beetle right underneath them and capture them in one hit. It's a neat little glitch, that. So that'll give us the capture beetles, which we found out last time you actually need to get the, the monster lists to work. And the curse stones to release the farmer. We also need to release the scribe to get the book of the dead, which I, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. That's how we access basket. Uh, but I tried doing it without releasing the scribe, and they give you the canopic vase, but.
but it doesn't teleport you to the mummy level. So, I think we've got enough... I think we've got enough fire armadillos, but I'm gonna grab one more, just in case. I mean, we need one for the monster list anyway. So grabbing one here isn't a huge time waste if we don't, if we don't need it. Perfect, so that's two. We, we're gonna use one almost immediately. Ah, no, yes, no, no, we've got the right amount, that's fine. I was trying to think of the other place we needed to use one, and it's the, the big boulder on the hill up there. The other location is just around here, which gives us another gold ank piece. So how many is this now? Four? Or th one? Uh, no, this will be our second one. Yeah, second. Okay, we'll get another one from the obstacle course. Another from shooting those targets over there. So I've... Because these are all so close together, it made a lot of sense to do them one after the other. Uh, I don't want to hear the rules, but thank you. All we've got to do on this one is essentially not fall in the water. I think you've got to do it in under 77 seconds. Which is really why we need the zipline, because... I think you can hover down the zipline, but I think it just takes too long. Right, this is uh, this is the bit I always mess up on. I always drop too early. Well, Sphinx is holding on with his fingertips. That's very impressive. Okay, lovely. Smash the button. And hop on. I think the easiest way to to actually do this obstacle course is just take your time. As soon as you start rushing it, you start making mistakes. Whereas that should be pretty much exactly 76 seconds. 75 seconds, I'm impressed. Okay, time for the targets and th that will bring us up to four ank pieces. Shoot that target. Shoot that target. Shoot that target. Perfect. With a controller, that one can be quite tricky because since the targets are far away and your cursor is pretty much the same color as them, uh, it can be a little difficult to aim them properly. Brilliant. Time to go and release the farmer. It's also kind of important to go and grab some scarabs one while we're in here. Unfortunately, the pots in here don't seem to be very consistent. No, okay. Oh, okay, that's uh that's not nothing. That'll that'll do us for now. Uh, now I'm sure many of you hate these guys. I think the best way to to fight them, honestly, is wait until they do their their little jump to do the laser. Like that. And then go and hit them. Oh, they're also pretty much silent. <laughs> So if you're not if you're not turning in the right direction, they will hit you. We should be all right on health. I won't wait around for that. Farmer is released. Another thing off our checklist. Now we just head to the other side and release the scribe. I think it's the scribe anyway. Perfect. Book of the Dead. So we do come in here later as well because we need to use the white stone uh, to release the lady who gives us the canopic vase to go to the fifth mummy section. And then right after we're going to be doing the pharaoh section as well, this uh, pharaoh spider. Okay, now we just need to destroy these eye of Ra posts so the farmers can get to work. I'm going to grab nine um, burbles. Yeah. 
which unfortunately is uh, just a case of waiting for them to spawn. It is quite a depletion on our capture beetle total as well, so hopefully we'll be able to get some more from the the post that's to our left. If not, we should be fine. One more. Yeah, that should do it. Perfect. Let's see if we get any more out of this. Nope, I'll take a green scarab though. Perfect. Uh, we also want to blow these boulders up for later. And now it's just a case of blowing up the five remaining posts. The extra burbles that we got are for the ank piece that's under the farm that's covered by two boulders and there's also another one on the high ledge up there which you need a burble to access. You know what, I'm gonna grab the eye of a turn while we're here. So we, we need four eyes in total. Now you can buy four eyes from Gebel's Glyph Shop uh, but it requires an extra something like 50 onyx scarabs so I thought it was prob probably best to just pick up some Atonites that were en route. Rather than going out of our way to get some more on Onyx Scarabs. I do sometimes wonder if grabbing a couple of extra ones to go in, say this eye or the one up there, um, since we do come around this section a lot, might be handy. So if we could use this right here and just sprint up to the farm. It may save some time, but it would depend on where we got the Eternize from. Whether the trade-off would be would be worth it or not. Hello. Okay, mummy number two. So this is the one where we use the Stone of Invisibility to actually get in there. And I found... I mean, I'm sure somebody's uh, used this before, but... I always used to struggle with the second set of eyes getting past them. But I found if you go right up close to them, it makes it so much easier to get past. We just gotta be careful we don't get spotted by this one straight away. Perfect! Okay, wait for it. Run up to it. Oh, slightly too far. That's fine. At least it's the first one. You want to run up right close to it, but... About here. Yeah, there you go. Do the same with this one. And that makes it so much easier to get past them, rather than constantly having to go invisible. Uh, yeah, we've saved. We've saved. It's fine. I'm a sucker for saving. I do it all the time, you know, um, university documents and everything. Just control S constantly. Right, I believe we need to get, yes, all the Onyx Arabs from this section. Thankfully, this, this section is so much shorter than the last one. So we're going to set you up on this platform first. We're going to do Paper Mummy next. And then we'll do Fire Mummy, collect all the Onyx Scarabs, and that'll just be the level done. It's such a short level. Perfect timing on that as well. I love it. Okay, we're going to switch back to the first mummy, come up here, and then switch to you. And the nice thing is we can collect all of the Onyx Scarabs and complete the level with just one one fire mummy. We don't have to do that again. Can we get past this? Yes. Two, three. Perfect. Everything's lining up for us on this one. I'm really going to need a rest after this. It, uh, it takes a lot of concentration, especially if we're doing this for three hours. And then 
later this afternoon. I am also streaming for another three hours. So hopefully I'm going to sleep well tonight. It has been very warm recently though. Quite makes it very difficult to sleep. I also bought a fan off Amazon and it arrived. I set it all up, put it all together, plugged it in, turned it on and nothing happened. <laughs> I was like, oh no, please don't tell me I've got a defective one. So my girlfriend Charlotte came home from work. I was like, yeah, our fan doesn't work. She turned it on and it started working. Can you believe that? It's like, really? Really? <laughs> you won't work for me, but as soon as, as soon as I say it's broken, you'll start working. Right, that should be 45 scarabs. Yes, that is everything we need for this level. There we go. Mummy 2 is finished. Uh, what are we doing now? Is an excellent question. Uh, ah, yes. Talk to you. Okay. I believe you've got to talk to them first before you can choose a hole for them to dig. So we're going to start with hole number 15, which has one of the gold ank pieces in it. We're not going to get them to dig any money up until we have the large scarab bag, which is going to be right at the end. This also lets us very quickly get over here and go to Bedouin Outpost. Very quickly <laughs> come over here and go to... Bedouin Outpost. There we go. That what? Really don't understand this game sometimes. Just work this once. And then again later. Perfect. Where are we going? That's the wrong direction. There we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, now I just need to hope we're not going to drown. That would be very bad. In fact, I am slightly worried about that. We should have enough health. Um, this is oh, this is going to be very close. Drowning is probably the worst thing that can happen to us. Right, no, we've got plenty of time. Excellent. Whew, set me on edge there. Okay, we need to... We need to go to the boat first. You know what? Let's actually grab the scarabs from here. 20 scarabs. Uh, we'll go and run to the boat just to set the boat up for later. So we can actually boat here. Oh, nope. Okay, that's it, that's it. Oh, good, it's getting warm in here as well. I'm gonna say that's slowing down my brain functionality. Which isn't good because we've got Lost Temple coming up next. What's amazing is you can just come over here and smash these pots. Just get some acid darts even though you've never had them before. It's very handy. Oh, first time entrance. I did manage to get it, so uh, when you hover all the way in, but for some reason when I do it, it's just not very consistent. So thank God for the backup over here. Which is quite a bit slower, but at least it's consistent. Right, talk to you, and then we'll head around the left side first. Again, I am going to save. Just because the fight at the end of this section is quite tough. But that's also why we catch the big bull early, because then we don't have to worry about catching it at the end of this section when there are two of them. Okay, we're alright on health. I would like to be full health for this, though. Uh, because there are, there are a couple of strats which can take a lot of health. 
and we want as many attempts as them at them as possible. Originally, I thought we would just have to do um, the final fight to get the Golang piece and capture the Dark Worshipper. But unfortunately, that's not the case because we need to we need to get all the Rosetta Stone pieces to give to the archaeologist to get the fourth money section, which leads us to doing the whole of Lost Temple. Right, that's the skull. Just hope that other guy doesn't see us. Unfortunately, they go invincible for a short period of time when they throw their axe. So you kind of want to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, arm. Make sure we get the body parts in the correct order. Pelvis. And finally, the leg. Now, we don't really need to do much else in this section. As we're getting the Dark Worshipper in the other half, a lost temple. We're just going to skip all of these because they pretty much contain nothing that we need. But we do need to remember to get the Rosetta piece from in here. Right, number two. Now, the nice bit about this is you can just not do that. <laughs> you can. You can hover and then jump across this section like that. There we go. Much better. As usual, we'll just capture the green worm. Saves a little time and it's quite fun to do. Drop down here. Uh, middle one on this side has the stone piece. And then we need to head over to the other side. So we'll just just wait on this platform to come around. That one and this one. Did you, oh, you didn't die. That's interesting. Okay, so we'll come over here. We will do... this section, which we don't have the eye starts for this time. So we are going to have to do this normally. There's one, two, three, four. We have 11 acid darts left, which should be plenty. That's why I got both of the pots at the entrance to Lost Temple. Just so we don't run out. And a top up on health as well. Very handy. Right, don't block. This is also where we get the mummy worm and of course the dark worshipper, as this is the only place we can get that. The trickiest part is yet to come though. I think I've done a pretty good job at practicing it, I hope. So we shouldn't have too much trouble with the uh, with the glitch. That's uh, that's fine. There's another one on the other side. Nice. Right, just remember, hit it once, you fool. There we go. I am so glad there are two of them. Now, strangely enough, we uh, we do actually need to capture this fire armadillo. Uh, but, okay, we'll capture the next one that spawns. Getting very overzealous with my swings today. you. 
We need to burn this in order for the green worm to appear for some reason. Don't know why. But if we don't, the... The green worm won't appear on this side. It hasn't appeared. Do we have to pull this? Maybe. There was something we had to do. There we go, it's spawned now. So we do need one glyph key. Uh, for later. Right, okay, that's one. Uh, let's break both of these chains. That's fine, we just needed the spawn point on this side. Whoa, okay, it's all working, it's all going well. This is very good to see. And now for the big fight. Final Rosetta Stone piece. Any health for you? Nope. Come on, you. You've got to stop swinging at some point. Give me some health. Come on. Oh, nice. Uh, maybe take these guys on one at a time. We want to finish the fight uh, at the side of the arena. So we only attack the attention of one big bull at a time. Perfect. Okay, now you. Just one hit at a time, and they can do nothing about it. That was an excellent fight. A little slow, but we just wanted to be safe there. So that's another gold ank piece and all of the Rosetta Stone pieces. The final challenge is getting across here, though. And we've done it first time. And again, actually perfect. Just make sure we don't miss that. Oh, that is lovely. I am so glad we managed to do that first try. After that, we just go and see the archeologist and head out of Lost Temple. We don't even need to glitch out because he does give us the, um, the underwater projectiles. Right, there we go. Lost Temple has been completed. So what's next? We need to grab one more... Uh, a turn eye. And then we head over to... Bedouin Outpost. Because we need to do all of the Rosetta Stone... Uh, gathering and... Go and see all the obelisks. To, our main goal now, essentially, is to get to mummy level number four. Put you in. We will put the other one in. And then there's a nice, convenient one in here. You can see why we need uh, a fair amount of money as well for all the boating that we're doing. So we're going to collect the Rosetta Stone, get uh, a couple more scarabs from in the pot over here, and then go and find the obelisks. It's a very minor thing. I've been debating the best order to do these obelisks in. I'm going to, I feel like I shouldn't mix it up mid run. I'm going to try doing it this way instead. 
because you seem to only be able to get up this one using this pad specifically. It's a very nice trick there. I, I'm going to have to make a really big shout out to the other Sphinx. One of the other Sphinx speedrunners, Sat, who uh, is pretty much the only person to have submitted a 100% run. So I've been using that run to find out a lot of different tips and tricks, uh, which have been very helpful in putting together this route. And third obelisk here. Actually, you know what? I think it's I think it's that pad there. That one there. I don't think it lasts as long as the others. So usually I'd come and do that obelisk second, then go and do that one. But as soon as I get there with this uh, this speed pad, it runs out too soon. Uh, do we we do this one next, don't we? In fact, I think I completely forgot to go and do the. Um, yes, get the piece under the farm. So we will go and grab that now. And actually, that will <laughs> that will give the farmers a bit of time to head back to their huts as well. Usually what you do is when you see the farmers heading back, if you head through a loading zone and head back through, they will instantly be uh, put into their hut. Is that number seven? Number seven. Almost halfway there. Don't forget, we have also got some extras from doing the mummy levels as well. Oh, they take so long. All right, uh, let's let's go and roll this boulder down while we're waiting for them. It's nice that there are a couple of other things we can get on with. Well, I should have just gone back through the, the loading zone on the high ledge. Oh, no, it didn't get up there. I think you can if you uh, stand further away from the boulder and use the fire armadillo. I think you can read the sign and then jump off as the boulder's rolling, which may save a bit of time. Well, I suppose it's not essential. Right, come on, you've got to be at your house now. Surely... Where are you? Are you in there? Are you in there? You are! Golang piece, up to number eight. And now we'll go and dig plot number four, which contains the other Golang piece. Okay, and... We still have one more obelisk to get, so... We're going to use the Atun statue that we very handily got from Mummy Level 2 to head back through here. It takes a while to get going, but once it does, the the gold ank pieces, they just keep coming. So essentially, next on the agenda is Geb Queen. I'm going to grab that. Oh, actually, no, sorry. It's Mummy 4 and then Geb Queen. And here comes the laborious part of herding the squirts into their pen. Would be nice if they just ran just a little faster, because it's not particularly difficult either. I do like these kind of side quests though, where it's it's very short, but it's, you know, it's a little more interesting. So it's like, oh, here's this farmer who needs our help. Oh god, no, we've got to herd squirts. I suppose in that regard, I am grateful there are only four of them. In you go. And you. And you, you last one. There you go. Talk to the farmer. Gold ink piece number nine. Now, we do actually need to put the text together to get the Hathor statue. So, unfortunately, we can't just run through there. 
we do need to head back to Bedouin Outpost first. Uh, we're on 194 scarabs. So we're going to grab 20 more when we're here. I mean, to be honest, we could just get them from the... Yeah, we'll just... Well, I'll get them just in case. <laughs> oh, no, they're not there. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, we'll get them from the palace section anyway. How are we doing on health? Okay, we'll grab some... Oh, okay, we'll grab some capture beetles then. Actually, you know what? Capture beetles is good. Capture beetles is absolutely fine. Because we do still have a fair amount of monsters to capture. Right, Mummy 4. We have done this one plenty of times. Uh, so, obviously, I immediately go the wrong way. What we've got to remember, though, is we can't drop down here. We do have to go along this beam because the eyes are there this time. When we usually do Mummy 4, we do it instead of Mummy 6, which causes all of the eyes in this section to essentially disappear. Now, Mummy 4, uh, we need to collect... How many scarabs? 60. 60 scarabs. 60 onyx scarabs. Now, we're, getting, we're not going to be collecting all the scarabs because some of them you've got to go down a bit for and it's just not worth it, I found. Uh, we'll collect some in, I think, Mummy 6, which are easier to get. But we'll get the ones that are on our way. Okay, need to remember not to jump on here. And then jump up there. There we go. Got both of them on. I believe that's the optimal way to do that elevator, but I think as long as you do it in one cycle, it doesn't really matter what order you put the mummies on. There we go. Okay, fire mummy is available. And obviously that's what we need to get the the onyx scarabs. Now I am thinking whether we could have just... Eh, maybe would it be worth it? I don't know. Because we do need to get set on fire twice. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe in Mummy 6 it would have been... Or it would be better to grab some extra scarabs which would be quicker. But we will stick to the route that I've written. Otherwise we will get very mixed up. So grab these. Grab these. So that's 30. We've got half of them. And we're not going to go across there straight away. We're going to drop down first. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, don't drop on the switches. Ah, yes, I remember this one. Okay, we're going to go across here first. These are less likely to go in the water, so we'll grab these first. And these, it doesn't matter if we lose our fire. But we got them anyway. Yeah, you can see the, that second box much closer to the water and much more likely to drop in the water. So, if we've already got the rest of the scarabs, it doesn't matter if we lose our fire there. I think we're making very good time here. We've still got Geb Queen to do and Mummy number five, Pharaoh Spider, Mummy number six, and obviously complete monster lists, etc. Get all the money, but I think we're doing very well. I th I'm not sure two and a half hours is going to be a particularly accurate estimate. Ooh, especially if I keep missing things like that. But we are just under two hours, which I think is uh, is a very good time so far. I also need to decide on whether I'm going to leave this video as it is and just, uh, you know, leave most of it in. Where are we going? We're going this way. We are going this way. Or whether I'm going to edit, edit it down. Otherwise, it is going to be like a two and a half hour video. Although I know you guys do like watching uh, these challenges in full for the most part. Oh, made it up. That is excellent work.
and made it in as well. We do need to capture the fire armadillo here. Grab you, and now we just head to Geb Queen, as usual. So we're not collecting ice darts this time, we don't need them. I've got to say, I'm very excited for this section. And you'll see why in a moment. You may have already worked out uh, something that we can do to save some time. Something that we may have picked up earlier. See if you can work it out. Oh, we're a little high there. Yeah. Uh, now, will we be able to... Will we be able to get this platform skip? Ah, uh, no. Jumped too early, I think. That's alright. Uh, we'll use this opportunity to go and grab some health if we need it, or capture beetles. Capture beetles are okay. That's too far. We should be alright on health. It is just slightly concerning uh, with Geb Queen. Especially because we have less health than normal, I believe, uh, when we do Geb Queen in an any percent run. But look at this, we already have a glyph key. In fact, we have two glyph keys, which we probably didn't need to get. So we can skip out the whole of Uruk Temple. What a lovely feeling. So we do need to grab the tree creature from here, the spike spider and the skull worshipper. Thankfully, all very close together on our route. I, I mean, spike spider, you know, it's uh, you can kind of grab anywhere, but Tree Creature and Dark Worshipper are the main ones. Right, hit you. And then Capture Beetle and hit. That is a lot of health lost, unfortunately. I was hoping it would capture the tree creature first try. Unfortunately, it didn't. Come on, you can get on there. There we go. Nice. And grab the ank as well. See if one of the spike spiders drops any health. Come on, please. Do it for me. Oh, unbelievable. Okay, which means we have three health. Possibly four. A little less than three. To, to defeat Gev Queen. Whew. It's right, we saved. That is why we save. And now, Skull Worshipper just needs to make sure we don't kill it. And then you as well. Please just give me some health because I really need it right now. One is fine, right. Going into Geb Queen with three HP. It does make you think when we do a normal playthrough with just one maximum HP, Geb Queen's gonna be a nightmare. Am I still gonna abuse health and stop her attacks? Eh, maybe, we'll have to see. <laughs> we'll have to see, all right. Release one spider. Nice, that's two health down. Now you should send some balls at me. Perfect. 
You want to get those balls as soon as possible. So we can release two more spiders. Don't grab her yet. That's fine. Okay, that's less fine, but we still got two spiders up. Just one more grab. Go on, go on, go on. What are you doing? Yes, look at that. I think we took like one damage there. Whew, we could totally do that with one health. Um, and then, ah, where do we go now? Uh, Anubis, that's right. Because we can now get to Mummy 5. Oh. This feels good. This feels good. It's nice when a plan comes to fruition. So that's acid darts and some stones. Don't need those. We need the uh, the other cursed stones. There we go. Don't need any more fire armadillos. We just need the one for the monster list. We do also need to remember to collect the gold ank piece from the farm before we do mummy five. Okay, that's 214. So we need to have roughly about 240 uh, after collecting the ones from the pharaoh's section of the cursed palace. Right, so they'll start heading back. I think it's actually quicker for us to, <laughs> to come over here, go in the loading zone and come back rather than wait for them. I wish they'd walk just, please, slightly faster this way. Oh, you know what? I've probably lost all the time we would have gained from that by going back for it, but there you go. Okay, and one more, please. I need you to dig hole number 10, which contains 600 scarabs. So this is going to be our main source of money for our health upgrades, but we're not going to use it yet. Well, we're not going to collect it yet. We need to wait until we have the large scarab back. So we're going to do Mummy 5, then we're going to do Pharaoh Spider, and following that, Mummy 6. We'll then head to Abidos, hand in all of the, uh, the jewels, and then we, were, we will be on our way be very close to finishing. In fact, you know what, now I think about it, two and a half hours is looking like a pretty good estimate. Yep, I'll catch your chihuahuas. You know, you can actually try and sell the chihuahuas in the Abidos Monsters shop, but the guy won't take them. He says he hates chihuahuas. Well, here we'll release uh, these guys. And last one. Okay, that is all we need to get into Mummy 5, and we don't need to collect any Onyx Scarabs in Mummy 5 either. In fact, I don't know how many Onyx Scarabs we've currently got, but we should be on something like 290? Right, grab the key. Here's someone else who walks incredibly slowly. Okay, get you out of the cage. And what we're going to do is crawl through this little hole and crawl back and magically the door will be open. Look at that, just like magic. So this is a level we can do very quickly. It does rely on some very consistent hovers though. Just like that. So that's one done. Basically, the entire level is just electrifying those three pillars in the middle. And we can get all of them just by hovering to them. Oh, first try. You love to see it. You really love to see that. And now the easiest one, just the, the middle one. It's pretty much also why I didn't want to collect any scarabs from here. Is because you've really got to go out of your way to get any meaningful scarabs. 
So you may as well just try and do this level as fast as you can. And I think we should, if we're fast enough, we should be able to grab a quick handle here. Oh no! <laughs> I thought we might be able to make that. I wonder if that's, that should be possible to make. And there we go, you can see the end of the level already. You can see why a two and a half hour estimate is becoming more and more likely. Oh no, I can't believe I've done that. I didn't realize. Back we go, right to the end. And drop. There we go, we've done it. Time for the Pharaoh Spider. Now, we're not going to be glitching through the wall to get to this one, uh, because we do need some extra scarabs. That's plenty. It's also a lot safer going this way as well. Less likely to soft lock. Oi! All we can hope for now is a fast pharaoh fight. Full concentration. This shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> nice! That is four damage out of five already. Alright, hit me. Hit me! Hit me with your rhythm stick. Now we just need one more hit. This is stone will do. And now just wait for the cutscene. So we need 35 onyx scarabs from this section. And we should be able to do that in one go. It's tight. It really is uh, tight getting them all in one fire. One fire? Without having to come back here. But it should be possible. So I've got to get all these down. Never mind. Never mind. Which means we've got to put this back up as well. I was just about to say, don't try and rush it because you'll, you'll mess it up. Also, if you guys think you can do this faster than me, please uh, give it a try. I would love to have some competition on this. I'm gonna grab the scarabs right here. And this should get us to 35, I believe. 30. Okay, 30 is fine. I think 30 is the perfect number. At least I hope so. What am I doing? I'm getting flustered now. Yep, flustered. Flustered is the word. There we go, simple. No need to rush it. So we've got to get the fans running now. Can do a nice little hover down to that one. We've also got to go back into that section to the right with some electricity. And normally you need to sex set some boxes aflame uh, to get past them. But with this lovely hovering technique, we don't need to. So listen out for the water disappearing. There we go. Just hover all the way past them. Right, that is both the fans turned on. I believe. Yes. No. No, we need to, still need to turn one more on. Right, our last bout of lightning. And then what we're going to do is... Don't get squished. Okay. Hover round here. And down here. Oh, I love doing that. It is a shame the sort of ghost... Uh, evaporated mummy is only in this section and you don't really use it for any puzzles or anything it's just getting past one set of spikes 
I wish they'd used it a bit more. I do... Well, I have no idea if it was originally in some content that was cut from the game. It certainly could have been. Evaporate me. Not quite done with Mummy 6 yet, though. We do have the final part where we have to get the crown of set from those spinning discs. Not that way. This way. Yep, this is the only part you use the evaporated mummy for. I was very disappointed when I first did that and then suddenly it was... It was gone. And this bit you just do slowly. There's no reason to risk messing it up. And finally we have this one. Again, there's no shortcut to this. You've just got to step on the platforms. Oh, okay. Just don't miss this final jump, please. Didn't stand a chance. Excellent. That is Mummy 6 completed. Now, uh, we need to... Uh, portal. Portal to Abidos. That's right. So now we've completed all six mummy levels. We can go and hand in the stolen jewels. Uh, I've got to, I've just got to pray that we've got enough onyx scarabs. Uh, if we don't, there's not really much we can do about it. Definitely, I definitely should have checked first. <laughs> Although, there is something we can do. Oh no, because I saved at the end of Mummy 6. Okay. No, we'll just have to put up with it, I suppose. That's three. And then we get the parasol. And that's all the jewels. We are up to 16 gold ang pieces. I told you, near the end they just start flowing. We're seven minutes away from two and a half hours. Can we do it? Can we do it in time? So Heliopolis, then we're going to take the boat straight away again. We're going to go to Heliopolis Point. We're still missing one monster. See if you can guess what it is. And this is the moment of truth. This is where we find out whether we've collected enough onyx scarabs or not. What do you think? I think we have probably got exactly the number we need. At least I'm really hoping so. Yes, we have. We actually have five more than we needed. And that's up to 18 gold ang pieces. The remaining monster we need, if you guessed the half brute, you are correct. There we go, all monsters collected. All we need to do now is put in the key for the cave door, complete the beach race. That'll get us to 19 gold ang pieces. And then finally, get the last one from completing the monster lists. But we've got just one slight thing to do before that. We'll get to it in, in a moment. I didn't want to hear the rules, but there we go. So the beach race can be quite tricky. The trickiest part is actually hitting the lantern at the end. Now, if you're struggling with it, the tip I have for you is to not use the final boost pad as you're running towards it. Which may seem counterintuitive, you know, you want to go as fast as you can. Just run right past it. Double jump up here. Hit that, jump down. And then run back. Now you've got to, to hit the lantern, you've got to do it on your first jump. If you jump and swing and miss it, maybe even if you jump, uh, that would be stupid. I think if you jump and swing and miss it, it won't count and you'll lose the race. Even if you jump and hit it again. So you've got to jump and hit it once and then run back. And that should be perfect. 19 gold ang pieces. Okay, head to Bedouin Outpost. Leaves us with 220. How are we doing on time? Two minutes. We're going to be slightly over two and a half, two and a half hours. 
Okay, that is the large scarab bag. We're also going to come over here and get one more health with the 200 gold that we've got. Right? We're then going to head back to the Cursed Palace, pick up our 600 goals, and then head back here. Now, you may be thinking, 600 gold? You know, you need 800 for four ank pieces. That is where the monster lists come in. You actually get 100 scarabs for completing the first monster list and 200 scarabs for completing the second monster list. So that gives us an extra 300 scarabs, which will take us up to 900, and that is plenty to get four gold anks. 229, yeah, and gonna be slightly over two and a half hours. But I am very impressed at the estimate. Thinking about it now, I think maybe um, revealing some of those uh, ank pads, ank pads, atun pads, would be a better idea if I ever do this again or if you guys want to do it maybe experiment with unlocking some of these Atun discs right head back to Bedouin for the final time and that makes two and a half hours so we're gonna be about a minute over I'd like to say this has been a really fun run I've enjoyed this so as I said if you want to give it a go please be my guest and let me know what time you get There's 900 scarabs, and our final gold ank piece brings up us up to 16 for the remaining four health we need. Is that a voodoo doll? That's one. That is two. Make sure I press the right options. That is three. And that is four. We are finally at maximum health. Look at that. Oh, two and a half hours, two hours, 31 minutes, six seconds. Thank you for watching everyone. I know it's been probably a long video. It's a little late. But thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, please give the video a like. It really helps me out. Uh, and make sure to subscribe if you are new and aren't already subscribed for some more Sphinx videos. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. See ya!